بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the compassion of the merciful, all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family and his followers all until the day of judgment. Now our concern is about the day of judgment and the signs of the hour. We already addressed some minor signs of the hour in the earlier episode, but since we already addressed the, some of these minor hours, let me continue with them because I can add to what we already mentioned about 40 or more. In Iraq, at the Euphrates, there will be a mountain that will uncover on a mountain of gold. So that is another sign because at the end of time, so much wealth will be spread around people. And one of the other signs is that uh, wild animals and innate objects will actually speak to human beings and because of the hard tests that people will be put through especially when they are committed to the religion they wish to die the conquest of Constantinia which is now known as Istanbul will be conquered now according to Muslim historians and scholars this has been, of course, conquered by Muslims, and obviously we know it was conquered by a Muslim Turk, um, uh, Muhammad al-Fatih, Muhammad the Conqueror, who actually conquered it from the Romans, and alhamdulillah now it is a Muslim land, yet we will see another conquest of Constantinia of Istanbul, but maybe a different circumstances. As time will change and things will change, we will never know the extent to which events will take place but we know for sure that this is going to happen again at the hands of the Arabs as uh, the hadith indicated also a person by the name of Al-Qahtani will come out and will appear and uh, he will be coming out again this has not happened the fighting which means Muslims and Jews is also another sign, a minor sign of the hereafter. The uh, Al Medina, the prophetic Medina, will be also will be kicking out some of the evil and wicked people, and then it will be destroyed afterwards. But and also there will be a very soft wind, which will be taking the souls of the believers and. There will be, after all, no believers, only the wicked and the evil people will stay and then the hereafter will come and the hour will, will indeed take place afterwards. And at the end of time, the Kaaba will be destroyed by some of those who claim to be Muslims. It is someone who's coming from Abyssinia or Al-Habasha, Ethiopia today, and will have two lighted legs, very thin, and uh, this man will come and destroy the Kaaba at the end of time. And, of course, when this happens and, and the Kaaba is destroyed, of course, nothing will happen afterwards, uh, meaning of obedience and prayer and the establishment of the religion, because that comes to the end of time. Now, we may talk about ages and ages before this takes place. We may talk about years and even centuries before this may take place. But we have to understand that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was warning us. And in fact, when an eclipse would take place, or if there is anything that um, might uh, change in this nice system of the world, then the Prophet would be so much hurrying and hastening into the prayer and supplication, fearing that Allah might have any punishment. And he warned us, and he gave us details about all these minor signs of the hour, but then he really came to tell us about the major signs of the hours. Now, the major signs are, according to the scholars of Islam, are ten. And even the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that, I will tell you about ten signs, as, for example, some of the companions were sitting in the masjid one day, 
and he came to them and they were talking about the hour and he said, what are you talking about? Well, they said, we were talking about the hour. He said, well, the hour will not come until there are ten signs that will appear. And he mentioned some of these, which I will mention. Now, these signs are actually coming out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for people to prepare for the hour and to be, these are warnings that have come along with the minor sign of the hour. But the minor signs may come slowly and naturally without any change in the system of how the, the world operates and they will come gradually. The, the people would not be aware so much of their occurrence and their coming. However, when the major signs of the hour come, they will change the natural system of how the world operates. And they're actually some miracles that will take place and things will be, will not going as normal as we, uh, we are used to. And that's why these are very important signs. But we have to realize one important thing. The hour and the exact time for it is not known to anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah only knows when the hour would come. Because nowadays you can see that there have been some books written either in Arabic, in Urdu, in English, in some other languages talking about the end of the hour. And it will be coming by calculation on a certain date in, at a certain time and obviously this is totally wrong and rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as even the Prophet sallallahu does not know about the exact time but he warned us out of mercy that these are signs that will come as Allah says for example in surah al-nazi'at yas'alunaka anis sa'ati ayyana mursaha fima anta min dhikraha ila rabbika muntahaha إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا They ask you about the hour, O oh Muhammad. When is the new time for it? فِيمَا أَنْتَ مِنْ ذِكْرَاهَا Well, you have no knowledge to say anything about it, meaning you have nothing to say about the exact due time for it. Although he has warned his uh, nation, he has warned the whole world about what will take place before the hour, but the exact hour, we don't know. How this whole world will change in an exact way and also on a specific date or time is not known to anyone. Because the ultimate knowledge is all to Allah. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا As he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to your Lord belong the knowledge of the term thereof. Yes, indeed. What is the message of the Prophet, peace be upon him? Well, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا You, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, are only a warner for those who fear it. Because... The day they see it, it will be as the day had not to ride in the world except an afternoon or a morning because they realize that it is the truth. So our role, just like the Prophet, peace be upon him, is to help transmit this information, convey the message to people. This is important. I will be starting talking about the major Signs of the hour, starting with the first one, inshallah, just after we take a short break. So please, stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're back again after we mentioned in the earlier part of today's episode the rest of the minor signs of the hour and also the major signs. Now, some people will say, can they come in a particular order? Well, there is really so much discussion about this, and there is really no definite 
time or sequence of these particular signs that will be coming. We already mentioned that there are 10. And, of course, some scholars have done some sequence following the particular ahadith. And, of course, for some of them, surely they will come after the other. Because if we talk about them, we can talk about these 10 as the appearance of al-Mahdi. Secondly, the coming of the false messiah or antichrist. And thirdly, the descent and return of Isa or Jesus, peace be upon him, coming down from heaven. And the fourth one is the coming of Gog and Magog. And then there will be three landslides or khusuf in some parts of the world. And then the smoke will come. And then the sun, the ri the sun will be rising from the west. And then the beast will be coming, which will be talking to people. And then fire will come from Yemen, which will drive people to the assembly place or their gathering for the preparation of the hereafter. Now, these are the ten signs. I'll be, inshallah, by the will of Allah and grace of Allah, talking about each one in detail. But, of course, some of these signs will be surely coming one after the other. For example, the coming of the Dajjal is certainly after the coming of the Mahdi. And the descent of Isa, or Jesus, peace be upon him, will come necessarily after the coming of the false messiah or the Dajjal because, of course, the Dajjal will be killed by Isa, by Jesus, peace be upon him. So that is, alhamdulillah, for sure. And I think these, um, whether we, we say that this is coming first or this is coming second, they will be really, when they start, they will start rolling one after the other. So anyone, may Allah forbid, witnessing the end of these events must be very cautious and must hold to the truth and be sure that whenever they are being meeting or challenged by these events and signs, they should be returning to Allah and they should heed to the advice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, for every particular sign. Now, coming to the first one, the appearance of the Mahdi. At the end of time, as we know, a man from the people of the household of the Prophet, peace be upon him, whom Allah will be supporting the religion of Islam with, who will be ruling the world for seven years, and he will have so much installation of justice as opposed to so much um, widespread injustice before his coming and humanity at his own time and the Muslims uh, will be enjoying so many bounties that even the earth will produce so many blessings and so much good and the heavens will pour down rain and good things that will come down and there will be so much wealth that people will not even count whatever they have. They will just give it in large quantities and people will not even ask for wealth when, this, when the Mahdi would rule for these very good, prosperous seven years. Who's this uh, person? What is his name? Well, his name is going to be like the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, is either Muhammad or Ahmed, and his father's name will be like the father of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abdullah, and he's from the offspring of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in fact, from the offspring of Al-Hasan ibn Ali, radiallahu ta'ala an. So actually, he's going to be Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Alawi from the family of Ali, Fatimi from the, Ail, the family uh, of Fatima, Al-Hasani from the 
family of Al Hassan ibn Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. So, and this ruler who becoming the Mahdi, the awaited, guided person who's a human being who will be coming and ruling. Now, he's a normal human being. There's nothing unusual about his coming. He will be born naturally. He will grow with his family. And his name will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah or Ahmad ibn Abdullah. And he is from that ancestry of the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And there's some description, as we were given by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that his forehead will be so clear with no hair in it, and his nose will be so big with a little curve in the middle, as we found in the ahadith, innahu ajla al-jabha, aqna al-anf. That is how he was described, as I said earlier. Now, his coming will be from the east. And now, when normally the east is mentioned in the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is meant to be Iraq, or the area east to that, maybe Persia, or anything beyond. But mostly in the land of Iraq. And of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked us that if you see him, then give him your... Uh, pledge of allegiance and even if you are crawling upon ice because he is the Mahdi he is the guided one and indeed he is going to be the awaited for and his coming is actually an indication of the start of the nearness of the hour and he will be supported by people from the east they will support him and they will establish his dominance and his kingdom and they will so much have black flags that when they actually march they'll be so much in power and with prominence because the flag of the Prophet peace be upon him as he was going into his own fighting of the non-believers, he used the black bag. And even the flag will be named Al-Uqab. This is the name. And then, of course, the Pledge of Allegiance will take place around the Kaaba for Al-Mahdi. May Allah be pleased with him as the Ahadith indicated and of course we can go and talk about the evidence from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam there are so many ahadith to that effect that uh, even there are about eight ahadith or so there's no need to talk about this but let me give you one of these strong ahadith that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned jabir ibn abdullah May Allah be pleased with them both. Said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam saying, well, there will be a group of my ummah who will be standing firm, meaning on the religion, who will fight with truth and they will be victorious until the day of judgment. And then Isa ibn Maryam will descend and of course, the emir or the leader of the Muslim nation will say to Isa ibn Maryam, may Allah, be, may Allah have peace on him, come and pray and lead us in prayer. He will say no, because some of you will be leaders to others, and because this is indeed a generosity from Allah upon the ummah and the nation of Islam. That is, of course, according to the hadith, this leader is Al-Mahdi because Al-Mahdi and Isa, peace be upon him, will meet at the end of the coming of the Mahdi. And look at this, when we talk about the coming of Isa, may Allah's peace be upon him. In fact, Isa will be led in prayer by him because that is 
indeed a privilege to this Ummah. And Isa will not be coming with his own law. Rather, he will follow the law of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This shows these are two great messengers of Allah, and Allah's peace and blessings be upon them and the rest of all the prophets and messengers of Allah. But again, he'll be coming. He will not follow any, anyone else. He will not recreate his own religion or law because the religion is all the same, which is al-Islam, but rather it will be actually the law of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, there are some people who actually had some doubts al-Mahdi because there are so many a hadith you know they think that uh, because some other sects within Islam away from the main path and the middle path of Islam which is the path of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah uh, as they were describing this and well you have leaned and believed in that well we say um, that uh, so many Islamic scholars have written you know books uh, as to that effect and of course they put with that with clear evidence um, this these um, for example these people might have the idea of for example a hadith that they report wal al mahdi illa isa ibn maryam the only guided one is isa the son of mary well actually this hadith is very weak in narration as so many scholars who said that Ibn Taymiyyah said it, al dhahabi said it, al hafiz Ibn Hajar said it's not known, majhul, you know, so all of these things actually telling us that Al-Mahdi is for sure going to come. I know that the awaited uh, guided person uh, who will be coming is really something that uh, is reported in both Christianity and Judaism as they said the second coming of Jesus is the coming of the Mahdi or the um, awaited guide or uh, in fact even sects among Muslims but they have descriptions other than he is a normal human being but he will be coming in order to give us a sign of the hour and he will for some time this is towards the end of time when things get so bad but he will give us some break in that and we will be enjoying at least seven years of rule with justice and with abundance of wealth and so much prosperity within the world I'd like to end today but I'll be back inshallah with you in this third episode of the major signs of the hour until I meet you I leave you with Allah's care and protection and may he keep you in the faith very well established and enjoying his pleasure wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh